Hello everybody, welcome. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. And today is Wednesday, it's June 5th, 2024. It's 2.26 p.m. Central Time here in the Ozark. And this is the 2024, this is the mystery report number two for, for 2024. And if you're a subscriber, my apologies for the time in between these update reports I'm having to find time amongst doing a lot a lot of other things in order to bring you these reports so you notice the date that Gary sent sent me this it was August the 4th 2023 but uh, and most of my reply added an image or two and I just went through that went through this again so you'll notice that there are now 35 if you're a 2023 subscriber you only saw 21 of these this is a awakened radio series so every Sunday morning if memory is serving me this is going back 2012 then I gave a black star update report at awakened radio and then a mystery report and John went through and did some editing, edited out the Black Star Report, and just put the mystery report part in, and he put this together, fine, fine work by John. Now there's 35 of them, so 22 on. It's new material if you haven't gone through it before. So the mystery newsletter program, mystery report newsletter program, is about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using God's three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood testifying in God's word from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation. Once you see the three witnesses, it changes everything. And you'll realize scripture does a very good job of interpreting itself once you realize what's a spirit witness, what's a blood witness, what's a water witness. You realize that even God's word is divided into three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. So this is a this program is set up for you to begin at the beginning in 2019. The two gospels of the New Testament. There's five newsletters for 2019. Begin with the first one. Once you subscribe, it's only $25 a year. It gives you access to all the newsletters going back to 2019. So that's why it's set up. That's why I mean I'm I'm concerned. That I cannot do more of these, but not as much because you have a lot of material to cover. You have all these reports. You have all of the newsletter reports in the 2024 Dropbox folder going back to 2019. The objective is to read my book, The Mystery Explained. When you subscribe, then you get a free copy of my book, the EPUB version. Then you are given instructions in, in the book to read scripture pauline epistles three times specific instructions underlying and you're to purchase a um, workbook it's a it's new american standard version of the bible big letters with columns for a workbook to write in so that your bible is like mine with notes and underlinings and things like that and then you are to read the pauline epistles starting at romans going to philemon three times the first time you underline the personal pronouns in a particular color of ink and then the second time use a different color and third time use a different color and then later you'll realize even after three times that you missed some and those are tells they give an indication it's going to give you an indication as you mature of the things that you can see and the things that you can't see so well and so if you read my book, The Mystery Explained, then you're going to go and you follow the instructions Then you're going to be reading scripture three times. You're going back to to uh, video report number one that has a newsletter and a video together. And you're working your way forward to this report, which is the final one in the series so far. So if you haven't done that already and you're going to try to glean something from this report, it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be impossible, as a matter of fact. 
So be, be, begin at the beginning, and then you're going to build a foundation, and then you're going to build bricks on top of that, and bricks upon bricks, and then the doors will form, and the windows, and the roof, and and then you'll see what I'm talking about. So a little background before I get started with this one. Then Gary is, well, Gary, by now I have to say you're a special person. Gary sees God's hidden wisdom and his three witnesses more clearly than anybody else that I've met besides myself. He's asked me hundreds of questions, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of questions. So he's um, relocated here. Actually, he's a member of the survival group program and of the land acquisition committee. And he's very, very involved and great, great man. And so he got a copy for himself and a copy for his daughter, the mystery explained. And he's been going through it and asking, he asks me all kinds of questions and he sends me these questions via email and he comes over to my place and helps me uh, do the water program. You know, he helped me with all these projects that are around here. And as we're working, then uh, without pay, by the way, then his payment is he asks me questions. He asks me tons and tons of questions. So he's had the opportunity to ask me all kinds of questions on all these different related topics. And most recently, even going back to August 2023, then he's been more interested in his identity, which that's going to happen to you as you mature more. Uh, begin with the simple things, and that's the two Gospels of the New Testament, two churches, four baptisms, the differences between God and my Father who art in heaven, and the differences between Jesus and Christ Jesus. And then how the mystery diagrams work. That's the first six of the newsletters first that's the six introductory videos in the scripture section at tarot03.com and then you might go through the, some of the articles over at Substack. some of those are geared the top article seeing the light is incorporating the concepts taught in the mystery explained helping in using the nine living inside job for example to help you to see that the mystery of iniquity is far greater than what's just has to do with scripture so I know that there's some disappointment associated with this program, particularly if you're new and you're thinking that you're going to go, <clears throat> pardon me, to the most recent newsletters and you're just not getting something out of it. It's because you have to follow the program and start at the beginning. Things are simple at the beginning. They get more complicated as you go to 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, and there's only a few newsletters per year at this time the black star is almost here the the terror cells could be activated any time and where this would be a distraction for those of you who have the time particularly if you do not have the time or, or if you do not have the resources to prepare then my view is this is where you should be prepare yourself spiritually to the best of your god-given ability but again you're given a lot of material since 2019 to cover and if you're just starting the program, it's impossible for you to cover all the of the content and the mystery explained and all the videos and all the newsletters to reach this video, to reach, to benefit from this article right here. There's not enough time for you to do that. So beginning at the beginning. And so this is mostly for the more, more um, mature members of Christ's body. And... I haven't met another person that's as mature as Gary. So he's asking me questions that you would think to ask a couple of three years down the road. That's how the program is intended to work. But without uh, going over the basics every single week, every single week, every single week, the basics are laid out in the earlier presentations and then it gets a little more complicated. And this is uh, some of the stuff here is not going to make any sense at all if you have not started at the beginning. So um, with that said, and this um, appears that I do believe this is going to be the trend about your identity. Once you see the three witnesses and you realize that God is alive inside of you, he is incarnate, he is incarnate inside of you, inside God's word that is incarnate inside of you, that you're a servant, water witness. 
Christ is the blood witness enlarging inside of you, and God is inside of him. So yeah, we're going to judge the world and the angels as kings and rulers. But it's God in us that's going to do the judging in his son. Who's his word? The only thing that can contain God in this universe? Because God is infinite. No one has seen God at any time, John 1, 18. No one can see him because he's infinite. How do you see the front side, the back side, the bottom side, the top side of infinite? It's impossible. Can't do it. So how is God incarnate inside of you? That's explained in my book, The Mystery Explained. But the only thing that can contain God is his word. And his word is incarnate inside of you, and he does the containing. For God word that's in you. Otherwise, if God's word suddenly wasn't holding God together in you, you would explode to the ends of this universe and far, 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 far beyond. Because this whole entire universe is like a drop of water compared to God. So this is entitled God's Infinite Realm, where we are gods. So Psalms 82, 6, you are gods, sons of the living God. Christ quotes that in John chapter 10, verses 34 through 36, saying that, why are you throwing, I mean, characterizing, why are you throwing rocks at me for saying I'm the son of God when you're gods? Because you are. You're an incarnation of a God that's infinite in God's infinite room. And you're still there right now. Heaven and earth are created. They're not real. The only realm that's real is God's infinite realm. Heaven and earth were created for the restoration of all things, particularly one son of God, Adam. And that's the thing about the infinite realm. We're all gods there, and what we do is we incarnate inside of each other. Each of us are in, infinite. And we incarnate inside of our brethren, all of our brethren. I know you, and you know me intimately from the inside. Already. Everybody that you see, if they're a seventh-day person, is a God from God's infinite realm. And the probability is that you've incarnated inside of all of them. So when Christ says to treat others as you the golden rule, treat others as you would have them treat you, it's for a darn good reason. Because you have incarnated inside of all these brethren. How they treat you is going to be determined by how you treat them. Okay, so this is uh, this is Gary writing to me. And he says, what is the real or proper name you use for sons of the Lord God Almighty in the infinite realm? The ones that incarnate themselves into one another. I'm not sure what to call them. The, a little bit of background. Uh, Gary is a very meticulous type person. So I'm more of a field. and In construction, I'm a, I'm a field person, a superintendent. I worked my way up from as a laborer to, to uh, mason, really good mason, and then mason foreman, and then superintendent, and then I own my own company, hands-on in the field. Gary is the guy that writes the blueprints. He draws the blueprints. He designs the plumbing system, the electrical system, and things like that. Very technical type person, and I would say meticulous in, uh, and pretty much because I'm not that way. That's... That's so a we're a good compliment. We work to get really good as a team. First thing he wants to know is where's the blueprint? <laughs> if he doesn't have one, he, he draws it. That's the way that he is. So there's some things that Gary's going to struggle over that are simple to me and some things that he's going to see that I can't see because of the strengths that each of us has as sons of God. So he helps me on a lot of things. I get his advice, recommendation. He's older than I am. I get his advice and recommendation. And he, so we ask each other questions. And he's helping me and I'm helping him. That's the way that it works with all your brethren. So he's not sure what to call the sons of God. And it's really simple. It's the sons of God. That's what David calls us. That's what Christ quoting David calls us. That's what Christ calls himself. Um, in the last section of the mystery explained, the mystery of godliness, you write that God Almighty has turn the tide in his campaign against Satan by enlisting the services of a myriad of infinite beings from his infinite realm and by calling each sons. So you also cited Romans 8, uh, 14, 19, which states that all 
being led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God, which could include a whole lot of other different beings. So I'm confused as to what to call them. So could you please clarify? So whenever you're reading Romans 8, then you must read it in context. So Paul's writing to there is no longer condemnation. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. He's writing to the members of Christ's body specifically. So his statements are in that context. So it's easy to go into someone's words, whether it's scripture or somewhere else, and to take them out of context. So the first rule of, of interpreting scripture properly is reading proper context who it's written to. So something that Paul says there that we want to apply to everybody, it's not necessarily going to be so. In order to find out if that's true, then we must go somewhere else, which he's going to do here by going back to Genesis. Because the way this makes it look like that all are sons of God that are even sons of Satan. But this spirit of God that's that's leading us, so it wouldn't be the same spirit. I would, even though there's only one power, there's only one source, and that's God. So even the devil uh, is the deluding influence is sent by God, but the deluding influence is of the devil. Okay, so um, so he's confused. So at, I I um first thing I'm going to do is go back to Psalms, and quote. So I said, "You are gods, and all of you are sons of the Most High." And then. This is from Genesis 4. Oh, I'm sorry, Genesis 6, 1 through 4. Now it came about when the mankind began to multiply in the face of the land, daughters were born of them. And the sons of God saw that the daughters, see, they're called sons of God, because they are sons of God. So let me, I'm not going to read the whole thing here. That the sons of God came in, the daughters, and this and that. But the thing to realize is, is that go back to the infinite realm and Satan was a good guy for a long, long time. I mean, the way that we perceive is linear through time and space. There's no such thing in the infinite realm. We're all infinite, and there's no beginning, there's no end. It's difficult to fathom as a finite being what that is. We describe things linearly, linearly uh, hard to say for me. So you can see here that even though they're the sons of the devil, they're still called the sons of God. As we, that's what we all are in God's infinite realm. Here's a picture from the Mystery Explained. This shows the 777 seven, seven heavenly man made up of Elijah, Christ, and Moses, Mount of Transfiguration. There's a body of Christ. That's you and me. Baptized into Christ's body on the cross at Calvary when we obey the gospel. That's how we partake in the one baptism. We're baptized into Christ by the Holy Spirit. Then he dies, we die. God sends him down into the earth. We go down into the earth with him. We're there three days. God raises Christ from the dead. He raises us from the dead. He seats Jesus Christ in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and we're seated with him. When God looks at us, he sees Christ. That's the reason that we're not destroyed because of our sin. Because Christ paid for the sin and he baptized us into his son. So that he, whenever he looks at his son, he loves his son. So when he looks at his son, he sees, when he looks at us, he sees his son. Because he, he put us there on purpose so that he wouldn't destroy us. God has great need of us. And our role as members of Christ's body to judge the world and the angels. He needs us to the end of the ages of the ages. He needs us. And he made a provision for us by his grace to do that. So there's a body of Christ. That's that. There's a body of Moses too. First Corinthians chapter 10, start at one. They were baptized into Moses, into, into Moses, into the sea. They drank the same spiritual drink, the same spiritual water, water signs all over it. There's a body of Moses. They're set, standing on a sea of glass. Those that come out of the trans, the, uh, the great tribulation at the end of the age. 144,000, 12,000, each for the 12 tribes, body of Moses. They're baptized in the body of Moses. There's also a body of Elijah, too. That's the angel half of those that are on that sea of glass. 
th those truths are extrapolated by being taught by God, the Holy Spirit, seeing the types. God gives us two witnesses, body of Christ, body of Moses. And then he expects us to find the third witness. Many times it's the spirit witness, but not always. In this case, it's the body of Elijah. That's the angels. The angels didn't see death. Elijah didn't see death. I take this back to the garden, and you'll see that the first and the last are the same. This is Christ and the Mount of Transfiguration with Moses and Elijah, the last. The first, Adam, Eve, and the Lamb of God in the garden. Those, that's, those things are taught from previous lessons. So let's see, that's what I mean. If you don't start at the beginning, come through. Some of what I'm saying is not going to make sense. For those of you are that are on the path, what I'm saying now is going to make perfect sense. And then you're going to be able to build on top of that foundation. So on the other side of this veil of this creation, the domain of darkness, and this is heaven right here, a temporal blood realm. And this is the infinite realm. The only realm that's real. God, Satan. Then you have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God's Word, incarnate, Christ Jesus right here. On the opposite side, and this is the devil's side over here, Satan. He, he has the Father, Son, unholy spirit relationship just like over here. It's just inverted. Then in the earth, heavens, heaven, and earth right here, there's a 666 man. He who has wisdom, he will understand 666 is the number of a man. This is the man. I'm showing him to you right now. It's the body of the devil, of the Antichrist, and the false prophet, just like this body right here. This is the body that's coming in, the man of God. This man of Satan right here, this is the man that's on its way out. This is what rules the heavenly authorities right now. Romans 6. We do not battle with flesh and blood. Powers, principalities, dominions of what you're looking at right here. These guys are the ones in power. That's why there's no justice here. You think that Hillary and Obama and the House of Rothschild, do you think they're going to get justice here? Not going to happen. This is the God of this world. This, this world is of the devil. It's He is the God of this world right here, right now. He's about to be chained. We're about to come into our glory, but it's not happening yet. So this is just one of 80 images that are in the, the charts, diagrams that are in the Mystery Explained to help you see what I'm talking about here. So these are sons of God and these are sons of God to be get back into context of what Gary's question is. Take all this back to the infinite realm. This is where we all come from. There's just good guys and there's bad guys. Those that were deceived by Satan and those that were not deceived by Satan, but were deceived by those who were deceived by Satan. So, I'm almost hesitating to say this, but those of you that are incarnate here as men, you were not deceived by Satan. Those of you that were, are here incarnate as women, you are gods in God's infinite realm too, just like those that are incarnate here as men. But you are among those who were deceived by Satan in God's infinite realm during the Satanic Rebellion. You've been placed in the servant position because of that with a veil over your head. You pray with a veil of a, over your head as a symbol of authority because of these veils. That veil is represent, it represents a veil of authority and power. You're a water witness. You wear the veil. That's the way it is. Man is, is the men, man, the image and glory of God, spirit witness. Woman, the image of man, water witness. That's the reason why. Okay, so all are sons of the living God in the infinite realm. There are sons of day and there are sons of night. But they're all still sons. That's the thing to realize. So if you're a seventh-day person, you're a son of God in God's infinite realm. That's just the way it is. Those that are incarnate here, six-day people, they're different. They're members of Adam's body, the ones that are here, whether it's Chinese, whether it's Aborigines, American Indian, RH positive exclusive, RH positive blood. So you go to China and you're, you have 
negative blood, you could be in a heap of trouble because over 99% of the population is RH positive. You're going to find the same is true for American Indian, Aborigine, the natives, the naked natives out in the jungle. Same thing. They are six day people. They've been here for millions and millions of years. Seven day people been here from what I can tell. A little over 12,500 years made in the image of six day men, but different. Now we're connected to heaven of Genesis 1, 1. Six day people are connected to heaven of Genesis 1, 8. So there's a heaven and there's a highest heaven. There's a heaven of this creation right here, heaven of Genesis 1, 8. And there's a heaven that's the highest heaven. That is the heaven of Genesis 1, 1. And you are tethered to either heaven, depending on, well, who you are relative to God and his plan. Some of us are gods from God's infinite realm. We're incarnate gods. And we all know each other there. And some of us are members of Adam's body, which walking around in this universe right here, you're a member of Adam's body. But you incarnated at, inside of him as a brother in God's infinite realm. See, the difference is, there. whenever you incarnate inside of Adam, which you do inside of everybody, then there were people already there, hosts, they were created in Adam on the day he was made. So they're infinite, not infinite like you are. So there's a difference in six-day people and seven-day people. All six-day people that are here are victims. All the Chinese, all of the six-day people that are here are victims by the seven-day people. So like, for example, the Europeans come to America and they take it out on the Indians that were already here, Native Indians. Seventh-day people versus six-day people. It's been happening. Civilization has been surrounding the planet and taking over six-day people. That's what happened to Adam in God's infinite realm when his brethren turned against him. So we're replaying things already done. Ecclesiastes 1, start at 9. Nothing new here. Things already done. Okay, so... This is basically what I was, you know, I'm characterizing what I already wrote. But then Gary writes again. And he says, maybe I'm thinking about this too hard, but I'm still having identity issue of exactly what I am. And this is something, Gary, this is something that you and I kind of have in common. So whenever I first learn something, First learning to be a Mason, I can remember that report. My dad came by. My dad was one of the owners of the company. And they sent me, he sent me out to be with the, the finest bricklayers, the finest bricklaying crew. We built mansions, multi-million dollar mansions, fancy fireplaces, and all kinds of stuff. And the foreman, he was, you know, we had 15, 20 crews of Masons, different kinds of Mason foremans. So the foreman's he put me with were the very top-notch guys. And so he came to the foreman and he asked him, he says, well, how's he doing? He says, well, he's kind of slow. It was because I was learning. And when I'm a real high IQ guy, really, really smart, but when I'm learning, I have to know everything about everything before I can take it to the next level. So I was slow when I got started. But after I had matured and it matured into a mason, I was the fastest mason. By far the fastest mason. Me and my partner would work one side of the line, and they could put three, four, or five masons on the other side of the line to try to keep up with us. But I started off slow. And that's the way it is when I'm learning anything new. Is I'm, I'm like Gary right here. I'm not sure exactly about. So he's a very meticulous person, and he needs he wants to know exactly, not almost exactly, what he is, and so. And we had, uh, th this is from August 2023. Gary was here last Saturday and helping me. And he was asking me questions that were still on this topic. The infinite realm, identity, and things like that. So he's been milling this stuff for quite some time. So here's one of the diagrams from the Mystery Explained. God's infinite realms over here. This is where Michael the Archangel and, and the dragon are engaged in battle. And we're in that war. You are incarnate there. I'm incarnate there. We're engaged in a battle. We are almost infinite 
realm hosts, like constellations fighting each other. It's from our perspective in slow motion. And we are down here on the earth. We have an angel half up here in the heavens. And this is where the lamb is standing in this heaven right here in the center of the throne right here. So God, God's word is one. So what, we're, what I'm going to do, let's revisit the reality of God's word and the many incarnations to then use that model for understanding who and what you are in the identity department. So this is a mind tearing exercise if you haven't done it before. And Gary and I have gone through this several times and it can be very difficult to understand the incarnations. And we're talking about just the incarnation of God's word. And so having done this before, then there are some of you that are watching this, especially if you don't know what I'm talking about, they're going to think that what I'm about to say is blasphemy. But I'm going to encourage you to walk a mile in the, those moccasins before you pass judgment. So if you're going to understand who you really are and where you really came from, then this is the exercise. After you know, people ask me and asking me these things, God first started showing me these things in my teens, and I'm now in my 60s, coming heading toward my late 60s. And so the more questions that you ask me, and Gary asking me questions is forcing me to perk my head up and to look around and to shine the light around in the heaven realm, seeing spiritually. To see things, to see further than I've seen before in order to answer those questions. So helping others is how God's going to open up more doors for you also. So we're going to go through the little exercise of understanding God, the incarnation of God's word. Okay, so God's word is one and the same as the Almighty in God's infinite realm. That's the only realm that's real. So let's get this straight. And this is from Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, God. God and his word are the same thing. God is one and the same thing with his word. You can kind of imagine yourself and your word, you know, look inward, you know, and say something and realize that you and your word, your word is all you got. You and your word. Your word's either good or it's bad. You either keep it or you don't people you can become a pretty good judge of people if they're telling you things and they're doing something else particularly if they're doing it all the time so generally if a person's keeping his word i mean you know it you know who's reliable who's not who gives you the word keeps it who will kill themselves practically trying to keep their word sometimes we cannot keep our word for one reason or another and then we have to come oh this happened or that happened or this happened but god is one in the same thing with his word so we're human god's not god is far beyond anything that's human so begin the exercise by realizing god and his word are the same thing god is and his word have no need of redemption god jesus christ is the incarnation of god's word he himself had no need of redemption that's for us we are the ones that need to be redeemed Okay, so let's see if we can follow along. God asked his word to incarnate to become heaven of Genesis 1.1. So God created the heaven. The heaven is God's word incarnate. Okay, so God's word goes right over here and he incarnates as the word singularity, a circle. See, now this is from an earlier lesson. All you have is three spheres, God, heaven, and earth, three spheres. They are broken down into three witnesses each. This is the word right here. The word was broken. The Holy Spirit was yanked out. The power from on high overshadowed the Holy Spirit, and the Son became the Holy Child, the Son of God. So the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, this is Christ Jesus, the heavenly man. So those of you that think Christ Jesus is the same as Jesus Christ need to wake up. This is an entire realm, Christ Jesus. So whenever Paul writes is Ephesians 2, we start at 4. And 
by the time you get verse 6, verse 7, he's going to be talking about that Jesus Christ was raised up and seated him. He seated, God seated us with him in Christ Jesus. This is an entire realm, and we're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That means we were taken from here and put all the way up here. He transferred us from this, this uh, domain of darkness into his son. That was the moment we obeyed the gospel. Okay, so this is an incarnation. This is Christ Jesus that Paul talks about throughout his Pauline epistles. He talks about Jesus Christ who walked around on the earth, Jesus of the flesh. We know him thus no longer. 2 Corinthians 5, start at 16. We know him this way no longer. You know, something happened to him. And he was glorified and seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus and us with him. So Christ Jesus right here is the incarnation. So you already have the word in two places. God is one with his word in God's infinite realm and his word is incarnate right here as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ Jesus. Okay, so God created the heaven and then inside of the heaven created in him and held together in him, Colossians 1, 18 through 20, all things, including these principalities, dominions, and well, the heavens, heaven, and earth and everything that's in them. Okay, so what happens then? The light. This earth was made formless and void, darkness upon the face of the deep. The heavens were separated from the earth. Genesis 1, 6 through 8. The waters above the firmament, the waters below the firmament, and the firmament was called what? Heaven. So many people stumble over firmament that it is mind boggling. Whenever God's word says the firmament and God called the firmament heaven, then from that moment forward, you call the firmament heaven too. It's heaven. Stop trying to make the firmament something else. That is a realm. <laughs> it's between the heavens and the earth. Immortal souls are in heaven. Angels are in the heavens. Men are on the earth. Take the, the woman, put her back inside the man. Take the man, put him back inside the angel, and you have an immortal soul in heaven. Until that reassembly is put back, the restoration is done. The men are of the earth, the men and the women, and the angels are of the heavens. Until what? The judgment. So we've already been judged now for our sin. We've already been seen in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus. So when we're called to serve the Lamb as a member of the Lamb's body, there's going to be no angel half. There's going to be no man half. We're going to be a mortal soul put back together again. It's going to be new creation. Nothing else like us. Say there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, under the sun. Ephesians, I mean, uh, Ecclesiastes 1. But then uh, God's word appears to contradict itself. Second Corinthians 5, start at 16, saying that we are a new creation. And that we were created. So you go back to Ephesians 2, 8, 9, but read 10. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Okay, so what the light, Genesis 1, 3. What's, what's going on with that? The light goes from this realm to this realm. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, takes away the sin, singular. He's standing in the center of the throne right here. Here he is right here in this diagram. The Lamb of God in the center of the throne in heaven. The Lamb of God is the incarnation of Christ Jesus in this universe. The Lamb of God. The incarnation of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as one person. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the center of the throne. He's the Word incarnate in heaven of this universe. He's there right now standing in the center of the throne. Just like Christ Jesus is there right now, the whole realm. Just like God, God's Word is one in the infinite realm. See, there's three words right there. God's one with his word. Then you have Christ Jesus, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God's word incarnate as a realm. And then you have the Lamb of God incarnate inside of heaven of this realm. One, two, three. Spirit, blood, water. It's cool. 
but that's not the end of the story. It's nowhere near over yet. This exercise is to help you understand who you really are, because you're a God in God's infinite realm. Not God like God, you're a son of God in God's infinite realm, but relative to your existence here, fighting with Michael the Archangel, and here, walking around this earth, you are a God. You're a God that's there right now. The incarnation you have, the life that you have in heaven, that's already going on. We're frozen within one second of time and have been. The dragon's head is severed from the dragon. It hasn't yet hit the ground yet. It's been that way since old times of Genesis. That's how much bigger this realm is than this realm. Time differential because of size differential. So, word number one, word number two, word number three. That sounds like blasphemy, doesn't it? But these are incarnations. And that's what Jesus Christ says. John 10, start at 34. He said, why do you want to throw rocks at me when you're God's and I'm the Son of God? He's making a point there that I'm showing you right here. Because Jesus Christ knows very well, yeah, he's the Son of God. He represents, he's the Lamb of God incarnate. See, that's the next step in all this. See, John 1, 29. John the Baptist testifies. He looks up and he goes, that's the Lamb of God. Is it the Lamb of God that's standing here in heaven? No. He's the incarnation of this Lamb of God. This Lamb of God right here incarnated on our earth. Son of God. The walking, talking, living Word of God made flesh. John 1, 14. The Word made flesh. That's what he is. This is the Word made flesh too. Heavenly form. Lamb of God. Different people. Incarnation number four. Well, the God, God, God's words up here, number one. Number two, the whole realm. Number three, the Lamb of God. And then the Lamb of God incarnates onto the earth, Jesus Christ. And it's not over yet. It's Jesus Christ down here on the earth is raised above all the heavens to be seated right next to God in God's infinite realm. And it's a complicated story to explain how God is in the center of this throne right here. And he's infinite. It's hard to explain. It has to do with the second veil that wraps around his throne. But at his right hand is the Son of God, Jesus Christ. The Jesus Christ, that's the incarnate Lamb of God that was walked around here on the earth. The same Jesus Christ. He is at the right hand of God right now. So the Word, the Word, the Word, and then the Word was raised up and put right up here. But that's not the end of the story. It gets better. Here's the, here's the deal. That's already four instances of the Word, with three of them being incarnate. But there's another incarnate, Christ in you, the expectation of glory, Colossians 1.27. So when you obey the gospel, you have a new inner man. I've shown you the diagrams in previous reports. The Spirit of the Word, the faith of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit of promise, that's a man. And it emerges from the preacher when God sends the preacher. You don't just decide you're going to be a Christian one day. God calls you through the gospel. He sends the preacher. Inside the preacher is that faith of Jesus. You receive the faith of Jesus. It is a physical thing that you receive from the preacher. It enters into you and it changes everything. The power of the gospel. We could go, I could talk to you about the power of of the of God, the power the power of God. They they think it's people think that it's His foreknowledge. They think that it's omnipresence. It's not any of the above. It is the gospel is the power of God for salvation to those who believe. Romans one sixteen to seventeen. From faith to faith, it's a faith to faith transaction. The faith of Jesus that comes from me into you when you obey the gospel. And there's a whole laundry list of things that happens the moment that that happens including the fact that you all of a sudden show up in Christ Jesus. 
You weren't there, and then you are there. Not only that, once you're in Christ Jesus, God, by his power, makes it so that you were there from the beginning. You were chosen in him, in him from before the foundations of the world. Ephesians 1.4, from before the foundations of the world. So you obeyed the gospel, and poof, you show up in Christ before the heaven was even created. Heavens, well, heaven's created, then the earth was created in him. Before the foundations of that, you show up in him. Now, you weren't there but before you obeyed the gospel, but after you obey the gospel, you are there. Now, that's an aspect of the infinite realm. There was a time before Satan was created. You know from reading Ezekiel, there was a day that he was created. But in the infinite realm, when God created the Satan, he was there from the beginning. After God created Satan, he was a good guy for a whole long time. He earned all the precious stones in his ephod. But then iniquity was found in him, and destruction, dystonic rebellion, destruction. Then that created the need for a savior. And the Savior was created. The Savior was created in God's infinite realm. God created him. And his name was Adam. So when you read Ezekiel, my apologies, I was about to misspeak and I had to stop. And then it came to me, Isaiah 53. Let's read it just a little bit. There's a reason that it's written in the past tense like it is. Who has believed our report? To whom? has the arm of the Lord been revealed. For he grew up before him as a tender shoot, like a root out of the dry ground. He has no stately form or majesty that we would look at him. You're going to continue reading down and practically everybody reading these words to crush him, causing him grief. The Lord desired to do that. They're going to associate this with Christ particularly Christ at Calvary, that pouring out his life unto death. thing is, there's an earthly Messiah and there's a heavenly Messiah, and they both walked together 2,000 years ago on the earth, John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. So Jesus, John the Baptist being an incarnation of our father Adam, and another incarnation like Abraham like Joshua, like David, many, many skins for the two begotten, the two olive trees of Zechariah chapter 4, start at 11. So Adam could not go to Calvary for his own sins. And so he carried the Holy Spirit from the time he was in his mother's womb, but he had to pass that torch off to the Lamb of God, who formed him in the garden. Jesus Christ is testifying, saying that about John the Baptist, that he's Elijah, if you can bear it. That he belongs in king's palaces, king's clothing, because he's David. He goes on and on and on because the Lord God, the Lamb of God incarnate, is testifying about the Son, his Son, the one that he made in the garden. And the Son that he made in the garden is testifying about him. They're both testifying about each other because the first and the last are the same when you go back to God's infinite realm. So everything you're reading right here in Isaiah 53 happened before. It happened before, before the battle between Michael the Archangel and the dragon. It happened in God's infinite realm whenever Adam had to be created to deal with the death and destruction that was created. Nobody ever died in God's infinite realm until Satan. So then he needed a savior. And so that's why Christ is called the last Adam. Because heaven and earth, that's the soul and body of one Son of God. They're going to be summed up, become one in the same thing, and walk back to God's infinite realm. And I know that's blasphemy. It sounds like it until you can see it. And you realize that the truth is bound up in God's word. And God will show it to you too. He'll turn all the lights on and let you see it. Using his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. 
So David down here on the earth is doing the things that, see, this is Adam. And this is the Lord God in the garden that made him. And he's down here on the earth. This is Jacob's ladder. He's down here doing on the earth what he was supposed to do. On the earth, on the earth, he's doing on earth what the, he's spreading his tabernacle. Just like the lamb is spreading his tabernacle. Just like God is spreading his tabernacle. So this, these incarnations are all doing on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in God's infinite realm. So those three things come together. See, scripture says on earth as it is in heaven. That's what Christ says whenever he's teaching the disciples how to pray. They said, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples how to pray. I think Christ is going to, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. But there's a third to that. You're only given two witnesses. The spirit witness is left out. On earth as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm. You can see him right here. So heaven, and of this realm, this entire realm is a water witness realm. What the Lamb's doing here is the water witness work. This is the blood witness work right here. The spirit witness work is in God's infinite realm. Now, whenever you turn this and turn this realm up, then this is spirit, this is blood, this is water. So what's happening on earth as it is in heaven is happening this way. So on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. So here's the uh, here's the news. When we get to heaven and we're serving as members of the land's body, we're still going to be water witnesses. And a water, well, we are blood witnesses. It depends on what's relative to. But this entire realm is water witness relative to this realm that's blood witness. We're always going to be a teeny little piece of something relative to what we are in this realm. Water witnesses. So we're going to be transitioning to glory. It's going to be glory, indescribable glory. But then, no matter how much we grow here, when we transition to here, it's going to be even more glorious. Until these two realms become one thing and we transition back to God's infinite realm. Walk right back through that second veil as almost infinite hosts that become infinite by the power of God. Almost infinite cannot become infinite. If you can't double it, double it, double it, and it become infinite by works, it does happen because of God. God put his hand on us and boom, make us that way. That's the way it's going to happen. So my goal here, and I'm coming up on an hour, and you can get your hands on this, all this commentary, by subscribing to the Mystery Report. It's only $25 a year. And go through, you have my commentary here, which is a characterization of what's shared in the report. And then you can have access. None of these newsletters are ever going to be complimentary. The complimentary newsletter is going to be from 2019 moving forward only. Newsletter number one is what's there because that's where you need to start. You can't skip one lesson because it's you learn some in lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four. It's a foundation thing. And then build on top of it. You cannot skip into the middle. You got to get your pre-algebra and your algebra and your geometry before you get into analytical geometry. It's pretty much the way that it works. So there, and then Gary's going to continue. Uh, oh, did I get you to the last diagram? That's what I wanted to do. Now, you got this one. This is kind of in the beginning of the book. This one's near the end. Yeah, there's only three diagrams in this portion so far. So... I've written the rest of this commentary to help you to get through the different incarnations so that you can realize who you are. You see that you're a God in God's infinite realm, but you're the incarnation of a God in God's infinite realm. So you're a cell of Christ's body in heaven. You're a cell of Adam's body here on the earth. And that's the way that it is. That's why you're walking around in a living flesh body right now and a glorified body in heaven like Christ. And when you get back to God's infinite realm, then you're still going to be a member of Adam's infinite body. Why? Because you made the decision in God's infinite realm to incarnate inside of your brother. And if you're part of the righteous, then you are 
one of the brethren that decided to incarnate inside of him for good purposes, to be helpful. The satanic side, those are the ones, they incarnated inside of Adam's body too, to kill him, to all put him in the dungeon and all to chop off his head at the same time. Herod and John the Baptist scenario. Satan and Adam in God's infinite realm. Types and any types. So coming up on an hour, that's my report for the second mystery report. I hope that you'll go, hope you'll subscribe and support the research. Again, it's only $25 a year. If you want to uh, be like Gary and want more and you want to send me your questions, then you join the tutor program. And then rather than just gaining access to the newsletters, then you can send me your questions and they, I'll answer your questions. Whenever, as time permits, it's a, as time permits things, you have to understand that the Black Star Report and all my supporters for the Black Star Report and for at Substack and the Black Star is almost here. Threat assessment is critically important. And so this cannot become a distraction that keeps me away from helping those that are seeking assistance in and protection from the Black Star, neutralizing Black Star related threats and protecting themselves from the biological weapons. I don't talk about that. On That's the reason that this YouTube channel is still up because I don't go into those areas. You go to my Substack page, go to my website, tarot03.com and get all that information that you want. But it cannot be shared here. So subscribe, get access to all these. I mean, I'm not kidding you. You have tons and tons. This is, these are my interviews. The last time I checked, the link still worked. Royce has passed away. He interviewed me back in 2015, but you can glean things from his questions and my answers on that. And this is from Bible Chat. I want to get the Bible Chat going again. I wish there were more hours in the day. I'm, uh, frankly, I'm, I'm, I'm working. I have multiple projects. I keep saying the terror cells could be activated any time. We are looking at terrible, terrible things that are getting ready to happen. And if we're not careful, if I sit behind this, this computer screen too long, I'm not preparing. Right now, it's a lot of gardening things. Whenever I can get the water system cranked up the way they're supposed to be, then it's back to the security that is sitting on hold. And I'm getting nervous about that. And then there are uh, there's a list of other things that I must get done to be ready for whenever the peanut butter hits the fan. So I uh, appreciate your support very, very much. And let me just take you back. This is Substack. If you haven't been here, tarot.substack.com. See, here's the, this is scripture laid out in three witnesses. This shows how the tabernacle is laid out in the three witnesses. So there's a lot of information you can glean by going down here. There's articles here on the Black Star, on 9-11, on Scripture, the three witnesses. If you have the ability to support me financially, I hope that you will, right here at stubstack.com. It begins at just $8 a month. You can get access to all the articles currently, anyway, for free. That's the way that I really want it to be. And greatly appreciate you Substack supporters for helping me the way that you do. You guys are really, really great because you could get access to all of the, these articles without paying. That's the way that I want it to be. But you also get a mystery report subscription for free. You also get access to the, you get a, a Dropbox forward link notification email, just like a mystery report subscriber. So that's one way that you can support me right here is by subscribing. $8, you can have a copy of my book in your hand. You know, the EPUB version of that, I should say. And you can begin the program. You'll get a copy of my book. You'll get, you have the six introductory videos and these articles, the um, all these videos, all the, well, these are uh, MP3s right here recordings you can get information on these on the three witnesses and seeing god's wisdom in all of these videos 
all these podcasts, I should say, all the videos, all the newsletters. And then you'll be getting more out of the reports that I'm making now. That's the way that the system is, that's the way the program is set up to work. Extremely inexpensive, worth far, far, far more than what you pay. Appreciate your support again. Get more information right here at tarot03.com and at substack.com. If you go down to any of my recent Substack articles, like this is my interview with with uh, Dr. Jason Dean, just go down to the bottom of any of them, then you'll see there's a place to subscribe. You can click this link right here and subscribe to the Mystery Report without ever having to even go to the website. So if you're on your phone, this might be the way to go. Subscribe to the Mystery Report right here. And as soon as you subscribe any of these, you get discounts on your Nano Silver. You want to check out those articles here at Substack. The reasons why you really need that is going to really power up your immune system. It's going to make you immune to uh, like uh, a lot of things. And that's it. Appreciate your support very, very much. Get more information right here at tarot03.com. I'll see you on the next Black Star update report and or the next mystery report. Hope, hopefully the next mystery report news, newsletter number three is going to come out sooner than there won't be as much of a time gap. The next one I'm going, I'm doing my best every single day. Thank you again. I'll see you on the next report.